freedom for freedom for free freedom over fame free free freedom over f- cycle stays the same welcome first of all welcome this is unsolicited perspectives and i am your host bruce anthony thank you for listening and watching wherever you get your podcasts and video podcasts subscribe share like comment and rate us you can find us on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch at unsolicited underscore perspectives. You can find us on Twitter and TikTok at unsolicited underscore PER. Watch us live now. Watch us live every Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Twitch and YouTube. Our audience, our audience continues to grow with each and every episode. And I humbly thank you. On today's episode, it's another happy hour with my sis. We're going to be talking Leslie Jones hosting The Daily Show, George Santos again, the Ant-Man movie, and some funny stuff from back in the day. But first thing is first. What up, sis? What up? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I, you know, I mean, I'm hanging in there. You know what I'm saying? It's been a crazy week, but but I'm, I'm doing what I got to do. Living how I got to live. All right. Being a G about it. Can't complain, so you won't. <laughs> Damn sure. Won't nobody listen if I do. Don't nobody care. I, d- I barely did. I was honestly looking for uh, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. If I'm being honest with you. And, and you are? And you are, I, mean, I am also fine. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, mean, I, I can get, I, we could get real. Uh, I mean, I, the ghetto made me crazy, but it also made me real. Yeah. That's <laughs> what they say. That's what they say. That's what they say. I don't know if that's the truth or not. So there's a lot of topics to talk about and I don't want to start heavy. You know, that's not how I like to start the show. Start heavy. So let's start with lying ass George Santos. <laughs> now, now, now we talked about him last week, but mm-hmm. more and more stuff is coming out. Yes. So a couple of things. One, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but he vehemently, vehemently, Vietnamese, how do you say it? Mm-hmm. Vehemently. Vehemently. <laughs> there you go. Vehemently denies Did he ever dressed up as a drag queen in Brazil? I don't really care. Like, that's not that big of a deal to me. Well, so what happened was. Right. What had happened uh, was. A popular Brazilian drag queen. Mm -hmm. Um, And if I butcher the names, I'm sorry. I just butchered V in the middle. He did it again. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, but. Uh, a, a popular Brazilian drag queen named Eula Rochard uh, posted a picture wasn't, of them. Wasn't she the mom on the Cosby show? I think you're confusing Layla Rashad and Felicia Rashad. Yeah, well, you know. I'm talking Eula Rashad. Okay. Anywho. Uh, <laughs> Let's move on. So, Posted a picture of her and Santos back in the day. Right, right. Um, where Santos used to work, I guess, or compete maybe as a drag queen using the name Kitara Ravache. Ravache? Now, I believe it because you know Ravache? Kitara was uh, a character on Mortal Street Fighter. Combat. Nope. Yep. Yep. You're right. Mortal Kombat. You're right. You're right. Kitara was the uh, daughter, actually, a do- stepdaughter, adopted daughter of Shang Tsung. I don't know all that. You must have did some research. No, I just was a. I'm a fan, a fan of Mortal Kombat. The movies have consistently let me down, but I am a fan of Mortal Kombat. Supposedly so, there was some new one that was pretty good, though. The first like 15 minutes of it. Okay. And it was the making of like, oh my God, they're finally making like a real cool Mortal Kombat movie. And then it just, 
went left and it was not good. Okay. Um, neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, so, like you said, being in drag, that is not the issue. Like, people no. will try to make it one, but they're called homophobes and we don't care what they say. Right. What is the problem is his very vocal support of the Florida parental rights education bill. Don't get me started on, you know, I like to call him the Santos. Don't get me started yeah. on him and what he did early today. This we're not going to get heavy. Let's move on. Yes. Okay. So, which that is the don't say gay bill, which, you know, supposedly bans the teaching of sexual orientation and gender identity in kindergarten <laughs> through third grade, where it really wasn't happening anyway. If the whole thing is just a right. I mean, aside from maybe like chill, affirming children's books, but parents should be buying that for their kids. And that's a that little PSA here. Parents, buy your kids affirming books. First of all, buy your kids books. First of all, read to your kids. There's kids out here ain't reading. Okay. But buy them some affirming <laughs> books. There are great children's books about people of other races and ethnicities and cultures, <laughs> books on gender equity, all the things. Dr. I, Seuss was a racist and an anti-Semite. Stop buying them damn cat in a hat. Buy but hold kids up, hold up, bro. Books. I feel like that kids ain't out here reading. I feel like that was a direct shot towards me. I personally feel like you that was a grown man. No, I'm talking about when I was a kid. No, I do you read. Did, you did read. Yeah, I read. I read. Yeah. I feel like kids kids are not reading. Uh no, they got audiobooks now. What do they need to read for? <sighs> it tells me all. Um <laughs> you know just strengthen your reading skills, your comprehension skills. Right. It's necessary for you. I'm education. uncomfortable in this chair. Keep keep going, keep going. I'm I'm still listening to you. Let's I just gotta some, adjust I my have chair. This, uh, it's a, <sighs> like a little sciatica. Uh, this is where we start to sound like old people. But it's a mm. little sciatica pillow. Let me tell you something. What? <laughs> <laughs> you got a you got a butt pillow. I got a butt pillow because I'm telling you, like sitting at a desk all day. It did mess up your back. Anyway, George anyway, Santos. George Santos. It's a mess. It's yeah, a mess. no it's hypocrisy. That's that's the mess. But I don't even think that was the biggest lie. He's got a bunch of them, right? There's a lot, and he's it's, gonna go down because he broke some financial anyway. laws. I know he did. Whether it came out yet or not, it's it's going to come out. Yes. But yes. my thing was this: you can lie about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I've told some whoppers in my day, you can't lie on your mama. You can't lie, you can't on, your lie on your mama. You shouldn't you, lie on your mama. You can't. You, look, you, that's a high, that's a straight one way straight line to hell when you lie in on your mama. Opinion, yes. In my opinion. In my opinion. So he said, now, unless your mama ain't worth a damn, this ain't for everybody's mama. Some people got mamas that ain't worth a damn. You mean like the mama from Precious? Yes. She you wasn't can go worth ahead and do whatever you want for that lady. That lady, she wasn't worth a damn. She but was I horrible. By and large, let's, you know, don't, don't do it. By don't and do large. it. So he said that his mama was in the South Tower during 9-11. The this records, a, they this, found out she wasn't even in the country. No. And it's like easy things to look up like it's not like that's the thing it's difficult like... for us to call admissions well you know uh, well at, at NYU and be like hey was he a student there and they'd be like we don't we never heard of this person in our lives and in our lives fact verified he's a liar this is not hard math it really is out. not but I feel like it's something that's definitely pathological. It to to lie about stuff you are just not gonna get away with. Um, his old roommate said that he set out. Now this is just you know his old roommate. This is another stuff that that we can truthfully you know find out the facts on and what the truth is. But this right. is what his roommate said. This is what his roommate had said. What his roommate had had said had, had said was yeah. that he was going 
run for Congress and be on Congress because he heard that if you do one term on Congress, you're guaranteed pay and benefits for life. Yeah, and we all know that George Santos is broke. And all these lies are giving broke. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Well, um, well no, he had some money because he had that $700,000 he lent to his campaign. Yeah, that's called money laundering. I'm making that. That's an allegation that I'm making. I don't know if that's an allegation that's actually out there. You don't know if it's out there. It's not out there in the streets. I think everybody is assuming. Right. Where, where did he get that money from? I don't know. Exactly. I don't know where he got that money from. Because I'm telling you, I can't come up with $700 right now. So I don't know. <laughs> <have it. laughs> And he's in a, he was in a worse off financial situation. I don't owe no, like, I don't have bankruptcy, not bankruptcies. What did he have? Evictions. Has, I don't have evictions on my, you know, right. yeah. no shade. Life happens. Life, look, look. Don't life lie happens. about it. Own it. You'd be like, hey, life happens. I ran you know into what? some hard times. Own it. It's, it's hard out there for a pimp. He ain't a pimp, but it's hard out there regardless. I have been pimped. Again, allegation. You heard it here first. <laughs> okay. So let's, <laughs> let's stop throwing out reckless accusations. Okay. Right, 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 right. <laughs> this is only our second, second live <laughs> episode. And I just feel like you're going to get us kicked off the air. <laughs> Luckily, we're really not. Are we on air? Like, are we? No, on no, no. Air? We're, we're on air right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, no. Jay. I still, some, for some reason, the idea of live, even though I'm live on TikTok right now, the idea of like live, it don't really, I don't, it's not clicking, Steven. I, I don't know why it's not. I think because I'm not seeing us live. Like I'm. Well, you could put us on the TV in the background if that's what you need be. No, I don't want to do all that. That feels like a lot of work. It, it Plus, does feel I'll like. I'll look at myself. I'll look at myself. It, I'm looking at myself right now. Well, Anytime y'all see my eyes go down, I'm looking at myself. That's all right, because when my eyes go off to this side over here, that's because I'm looking at myself on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, I uh, think that's natural. Little no, no, little known fact about us, very vain. Oh, yeah. Extremely. Incredibly vain. We get it, honestly. We do come by it, honestly. Who is the most vain person you know? Between mom and dad? <laughs> I, see, I didn't see ladies and gentlemen out there in the world. I didn't I, even. I, you baited me with that. That <laughs> no. was that was definitely a baited question. You it wasn't a baited question. That. Yeah, because you knew what I was gonna. You knew what I was gonna say because it was the same thing you would have said had I baited you into that question. Nah, uh, uh-uh. I would have said I would have been like, well, there's a lot of vain people that I know out there in the world. No, but if I, I had to narrow it down, many vain people. I know a lot like of vain, vain people. I think all my friends are vain. Like all my closest, closest, closest friends, the vain as hell. They'll, they'll say they're not. Talking, they'll probably think you're talking about them right now. My That's closest friends know who they are. First of all, so first of vain. all, I got, I got as far as so like the like closest, people. closest friends. Mm-hmm. I've got three of them. Yeah. Okay. That's they know who they seven, are. Seven people that think they're part of that three. No, 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 no. I, when I say like my best friends, like, yeah, like my closest friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they, they know who they are. Like there's nobody out there in the world like, yeah, he's sitting there talking about me and I'm not talking about them. They, they know who they are because they know my circle is small. Like, so I'm not saying I only have three friends, but my three closest friends. Right. And again, I'm saying there's seven people that probably think no, that they I guarantee you it's not seven so, people. So do you have a best friend? Is best friend to you a person or a tier that people can reach? Tier. It's a tier. No. What you, well, you best have... means the best. No. Well, no. Your best friend is a person. It's one person. No, you can have the best team. And that's multiple people. No, but it team. will still be a team. It's You're a team. Talking about it's a, a team, team of Bruce's friends. No. Yes. If you say best friend, I didn't. I said best friends. I don't. I, I don't agree that best friend is a tier you can read. You have a. There's one person that is your best friend. Well, uh, hold on. Let Let me go back because I started out by saying best friends. And then I quickly changed it to closest friends. 
Right. Right. Because, like, you and Adam are my best friends. Like, y'all know me. Th- y'all know me the best. Every time I hear someone say to me that I'm their best friend, <laughs> I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> Because again, to me, best friend is not a tier; it's a person. Well, people so when have, I well, say best friend, I well, am thinking of one singular and we, person, and we know who that person is. Yes. If you take siblings the, out, take siblings out. Yes. You might not even take siblings out, but take siblings out. I don't put you and, and and Adam in the category of friends. Like y'all are, are my but, actual brothers. Yeah, but that the, just because you siblings don't mean that you friends. That's true. Right. Um, that's, that's what I'm saying. Just because we siblings but, don't mean that we friends. I know a lot of people, the siblings out there that ain't friends. But y'all are family. To me, that it's different. No, I friends got family are, that I don't even talk to. Yeah, but I feel like friends are randos you meet that you invite into your life. Like That could be family, too. <sighs> All right. Okay. Maybe... I, I, in my mind, I view them separately. Okay, you view it the way you want to become family. See, eh, eh, there's a lot. There's a lot of what I'm willing to do for certain people. Right. The ultimate question is: Is who would I go to jail for? And there's only one person outside of your siblings. No, it's you want to go to jail for me. <laughs> What did you do? No, I'm not going to jail for you. A grown, you a grown adult. You a grown adult. If we did something together and I got caught, then I'm going to take that ride. But are you saying like if you did something, would I take the hit for you? Yes. No, I'm not going to jail. I'm only going to jail for one person. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to jail. Look, you seen the movie Twenty Fifth Hour, right? Yes. Look. I'm on, I'm on that exit ramp and I'm on the run because I'm not going to jail. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to jail. I mean, I feel that. <laughs> I get it. Would you rat me out? No, I wouldn't rat you out. Okay. Then that's really all I care Yeah, I wouldn't. About. Come on now. I wouldn't rat you when out. The, when, the, when it comes down to the wire, <laughs> would you rat me out? No, I'm not going to rat you out, but okay. I'm not going to take no hit for you. I'd help you get away. No, I, mean, I would do that. Yeah, I would do that. But if, they, but if, they, hold on, hold on. If I helped you get away and they talking about Bruce, we're about to give you life. She only going to do three years, but we're going to give you life. You got to do that three years. That feels weird. That feel, why would anybody ever? I don't know. For, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking weird hypotheticals. I'm thinking weird hypotheticals. Okay. But we all know I'm why not. I don't want to go to prison. Prison in and of itself. Like they got, they got TVs you don't now go in prison. Jail, you don't want to go to prison. Huh? I could Say do what? jail. I could do jail. I don't want to go to prison. Hold on. It doesn't matter. Either jail or prison, right? And in, in a lot of instances, you can have a television in your cell. They might have mm-hmm. video games in they sell. Like you see that in some of these cells. They got it's a Nintendo, but it don't matter. It's video games, right? I have My, never seen that. I've seen that. You can see it. It's it's okay. some some of them have them. My thing and the reason mm-hmm. why I don't never want to go to jail. It's because you don't have no privacy in your bathroom yeah. situation. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about a shower because, I, you know, showering around, man, I don't really have no problem with that. So when I got to go number two. Yeah. I need privacy. <laughs> I said, to, yeah. you know, I'm about to get real personal. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get real personal right now. <laughs> Personally, when I'm doing number two, when I'm at my most comfortable level, Mm-hmm. I like to be butt naked. That's 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 my get down. I when you said I'm about to get real personal. <laughs> I should have believed you. That's real. And that's that's where I went wrong. <laughs> you said something and I should have believed what you said. And it's I real. brushed it off. <laughs> it's real, though. And I it's gave real. you the space to continue. Okay. Yeah. Hey, look. Well, you can't do that. <laughs> and, I mean, you can. 
you could <laughs> but it's not comfortable right <laughs> Yeah. And then and then what if you in the yard? In the yard the 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 toilet has got a cage around it so yeah. that the officers can see in. So you yeah. literally in the yard taking a number 2 around everybody. Yeah. yeah that you, is literally yeah. hell on earth for me. Yeah. I could do everything else in prison. I could deal with the food. Hey, you telling me that I can I get me a little menial job, you know what I'm saying? I get a little commissary every now and then. I got I three hots in the cot. If it was unavoidable and you had to go, I would definitely make sure you had money on your books. Right. Oh, I would do that for you too. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, three hots in the cots, I could work out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd just be chilling, you know, not being around women for the rest of, you know, however long. That would be really, really tough. Uh, yeah. I don't know how I would do it with that. Um, you might get your PhD for all we know. I, I would have nothing else to do. You know, I wouldn't have the show or maybe, maybe they had internet in there. Maybe I could still have the show, maybe. but i tell you one thing. The one thing that I would not be able to deal with. Yeah. Is the lack of privacy going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, no, I, I my bathroom is important to me. My issue with jail slash prison and this is going to sound dumb, but follow me, is the fact that I can't leave. Like, that's the thing that's going to... So, you know, whenever we cruise, I get cabin fever. Mm -hmm. Not because there's not a bunch of stuff to do on a cruise ship, and it's huge, and there's levels and all of these things. It's, it's the thought of that I can't get off the boat right now. Yeah. Right this second. I want to get off the boat. And they're like, no, you're surrounded by ocean. Yeah. There's nowhere to go. Well, I mean, there's, I mean it's not like if I want to walk out of my cell right now and take a walk and clear my head, I can't. That. Hold that on. It's not you. Not, if it's 24 hour lockdown, you know, no, it's, no, 20, no, no. it's not about. I can never leave the cell. Obviously, I get chances to leave the cell. Right. When they want. I'm talking about when I want. Okay, yeah. I have ADT. I fidget. I have to get up and move around. You can't keep me in a little room and say, you leave when I tell you to leave. No. No. Listen to me. Let me out. <laughs> Like the person that goes crazy, that's me. And then I go crazy. And then what do they do? Put me in solitary. It'll make it worse. Yeah. So, no, I can't. No, I will not do crimes. I'll do petty <laughs> crimes. I'll do petty victimless crimes. Yeah, petty victimless crimes. Yeah. I have done. I mean, yeah, you know, whatever. Fine. Yeah. You know, I'll pay the fine, whatever. You might do. You might do a couple of days in county. I might have a warrant right now, but we're not gonna talk about. We're that. not gonna talk about that. You might, matter of fact, we <laughs> better. No, no we, we live. I mean, we, what out. kind? What concept of live don't you yeah. get? There is yeah. no bleeping out. Now, There's when no I when out. I when I re-release the video episode and the audio episode, I could yeah. bleep it out, but I'm not. Leave let's let's in. be let's be real. I'm if I not. have a warrant, I have a warrant, and that's the, then I'll deal with it. Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. Um, but, unlike you know, unlike George Santos. Unlike George Santos, and see, I'm real about mine. I might have some warrants, but I can <laughs> represent you in Congress. I don't think that's how that works. I, I don't think you can have any warrants. He, he got warrants. you. He got warrants. Yeah. In Brazil. I have a credit card debt, but I can represent you in Congress. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of, that's funny. But speaking of yeah, funny. Truthful. Leslie Jones hosting The Daily Show. Love it. Now, is she the Love host it. or is she just like a guest host for a little while before they it's find a, out who the host yeah, is? Yeah, it's a guest host. And I think they actually have a lineup of people. She's just the first one. Just the first one. Um, but I, I actually ended up reading a, a little bit about her first day in the LA times. She killed it. I mean, and I'm not surprised because yeah, Leslie Jones is funny. Yeah. Leslie Jones is funny as hell, 
she might not be the most like articulate or have the hottest takes in politics, but that's what writers are for. There's amazing writers mm -hmm. for the daily show. Um, but she does have charisma. And like you said, she's funny as hell. I saw clips. I haven't watched the whole episode, but Is I saw there a whole clips. episode out already. Yeah. She, oh, she's yeah. already had the first episode okay. and, um, she can even land those like corny daily show jokes. The writers give you. Like what? Be, sometimes be just real, just be corny. But like, I mean, I don't have an example, but you know, sometimes when they do like their, uh, what is it? You know, just the headlines and stuff before the guest comes out. Sometimes they get just real corny jokes. She even was landing those because she's just funny. Um, I would love to see a, a black woman on the daily show. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. And I think they, they chose, a, a, you know, as the first guest person. See, here's the thing. I follow her on Twitter. She's got mm -hmm. a lot to say about politics. She does. It's not always the most informed. No. Mm -hmm. she, but she watches uh, the news religiously. Yes. Yeah, she's on the yeah. – yeah, she'll she, she be watching the news. Yeah. Um, so she'll have a different take. Mm -hmm. And will it be as articulate as Jon Stewart or Trevor Noah when she goes off cuff? No. Probably not. But it'll be coming from a different perspective, which yeah. is always That's important. important. And right now, it's following the diversity trend. So typically, after Jewish guy, black guy, it's either gay, Asian, or black woman. Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh. Wait, wait. Wait, wait a minute. Where, where is this? Where is this diagram? Is this a universal diagram that's known out in the world to everybody? Because I've like, never heard this before. I feel like it's like an unspoken thing. And if people are watching that, they'll be like, "She's right." Well, where she's does right. white woman fall in there? She. Uh, so it usually goes the grand scheme of things. Grand, break white it down for me, because I don't know. White man, white woman, Jewish man, black man. And then it's it could split, and it could be either gay Asian, black woman. But why is it got to be gay Asian? Why can't it just be Asian? Uh, for some reason, I don't reason, know why I did the hey ho hand raise. <laughs> hey ho! I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I didn't create it. I'm telling you what happens. Well, what about heterosexual Asians? Like, where do where do they fit in this stream after, of? After plus size Latina, Latina. Well, where does yeah. Latino Latino uh, man uh, enter in? He comes in. Let me see. White guy, white woman, Jewish guy, black guy. Now is now what kind of what Latino man are we talking about? Are we talking about a, a well. Then I think it goes, okay, so I think Latino man goes after Jewish woman. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay, thank yeah. you for breaking so that all down for me. Sarah Silverman, and then it would be George Lopez. Like, it would be like that. Okay, so I, I was wrong. Somebody just informed me that we were not live. <laughs> Yes. So no, I I I see it's live on here. Well, let me, let me try to turn it on again. We are recording. I see no, that. we're definitely recording. I thought it was on live, but you know what? Maybe since I didn't start it, I, I turned it live on after we already started the the uh, the recording. So yeah, I wonder if we're on Twitch. I don't know. I, I messed that up. I'm on, oh, well. I'm on, uh, I didn't like the live anyway because, like, it on YouTube, Twitch, I understand it'll save it, and that is what it is. Mm -hmm. But on YouTube, it saved it as well. And I was like, oh, I want to, I want to edit this. I want to put the, I want to put our titles up there. I want to put the intro in there and, and do all that other stuff. And and I can delete it, right, yeah. and then re-upload it. But once Correct. I already saw the live, I saw it was like, it's going to be a lot of work for me to edit this. So I'm just going to leave it up there for this week. Yeah, it was lazy. I'm not going to lie. It was lazy. You know, I, I can't wait till you get to the level where you got a team. You know what I mean? Even when I have a team, 
I'll still be like, I can do this myself. I get a kick out no, of doing that you stuff. Got, you gotta delegate. I get a kick because out of doing it, it though. Need- I like doing it. Until you don't. Well, and that's the issue that you're having right the, now. The, the reason why is because I had a bunch of interviews that I had mm-hmm. to do. I got a bunch of interviews in the can. So yeah. it's like, and it was my fault for scheduling so many interviews that I was doing like back to back to back to back to back to the point where I was just like, you know what? I just want to sit down, drink some champagne, and eat some donuts. I don't want to do no more work. That's fair. That's but I didn't fair. have a problem editing the posts uh, the Jewish conversation on Tuesday, mm-hmm. right? But it was going back to re-edit the show after I found out it already uploaded. I was like, because ah, that was going to be a lot of editing. There was a lot of stuff that yeah. I needed to cut out, like the introduction where <laughs> we was live, <laughs> and, and, we, and you was, and I was sitting there trying to play the intro, and the intros wasn't playing. Like I would have to cut yeah. all that out. Uh, so no, yeah, yeah, I, I figured yeah. all out. You know, it just now I know. You now can I know. Go live from time to time. Yeah. Now, no. It, now I know that before I hit record, that I have to hit that it has that live already has to be set up. I can't turn it on live after I hit record. At least I don't think. Now I figure it all out. It's not. It's not. I that mean, big it, it, I, I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's not that big. Mostly deal. because I dissociated right in the middle of what you were saying, so I ultimately. <sighs> don't know where you ended up i'm assuming you ended up with it's fine and typically when people talk and i start to dissociate in the middle if i come back and i'm like i mean it is what it is that i'm i'm usually right nine times out of ten i'm usually right (laughs) and they're like it is (laughs) that's a little tip for uh any neuroatypical people who dissociate uh, in the middle of conversations. You could just come back and be like, I mean, it is what it is. All right. So we talked about it through mm-hmm. our own personal conversations. Right. But I am so looking for, we are less than a month away from Ant-Man and Quantumania. Let me tell you something. Are you listening? I ain't got no choice but to listen. So yes, I'm listening. I'm looking dead at you. I, unlike you, me, I don't disassociate. Let me tell you something right now. That was a lie. I often dissociate. Yes, I know that. <laughs> I can see literally your eyes glass over. <laughs> <laughs> so you're full, of, you're full of it right now. I, you know that. I, I, yes, yes, that. yes, I do know that. Let me tell you something. After the death of Chadwick Boseman and Tony Stark, and after devoting truly decades to this franchise, um, I was ready to walk away from the MCU. Wow. I, I, I mean, I was. I mean, Bruce, it's been a, it's been twenty years. It's true. Okay, and I've given a lot. I've given a lot. I mean, not just financially <laughs> like, I mean, the time that I've spent in deep de- psychological debates uh, and character analysis regarding the MCU but after watching Loki right that that damn Jonathan Majors right. first of all already a Jonathan Majors fan like any anybody who knows me should know I love me some Jonathan Majors. So I lied earlier today when I was talking to somebody about Jonathan Majors and I was like, yeah, I'm a huge Jonathan Majors fan. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold up. I don't, I haven't watched any of his movies. I saw him on Loki and then I know he did the movie with the Gila Monsters on HBO. It was a show called Lovecraft Country. Yeah, no, I call it the Gila Monsters because I remember I was dating a girl. It was about Gila Monsters. Yeah, yeah, I was dating a girl and she was like, oh, this show is good. We should watch this. And I was, you know, I'm, I'm da- we dating, you know, so it's sitting there, it's movie time, Netflix and chill. Uh, I, I should say that we call monsters in general Gila Monsters. We're we, not talking about actual lizards. Yeah, where do we get that from? Martin? Martin. Martin, yeah. So we yeah. sitting there. We sitting there, and you know, I'm trying to kiss her a little bit, and then the mm-hmm. next day I see is a, is a damn Gila monster on the yeah. screen, and yeah. I'm like, where? Why are we watching stuff with Gila monsters? I don't want to watch no Gila monster. Let me tell you, it's a good show. 
But uh, yeah. I'll never watch it because it got them Gila Monsters on it. But other than you that, know, sometimes you got to give Gila Monsters a chance. No, when for what reason? Because sometimes Gila Monsters is good, like it's entertaining. Like it's not always name like one time Gila Monsters, Monsters was entertaining. You don't consider mortal, you don't consider the uh, villains in the MCU Gila Monsters. No, nah, they weren't Gila. Thanos Monsters. wasn't a Gila Monster. No, nah, he's not a Gila Monster. Mm-mm. He's not a Gila what Monster. About the Jitari? They weren't Gila Monsters. Jatari. No, well, they was close to Gila Monsters. They were close to Gila Monsters, but they weren't cool. They, they were. Was, kind they of were cool. to be feared. And Thanos in the, in in end days was to be feared because that was a different Thanos. But the one in Infinity War, I kind of understood where he was coming from. You what? Okay, let's go to DC. Abomination is not a Gila Monster. Yeah, but he's not cool. And first of Abomination all, Abomination is cool. Abomination is Marvel. No, that's not what I'm talking. I don't mean Abomination. I meant Doomsday. Doomsday. He's the yeah. ultimate Gila monster. Yes. He's Gila monster he's supreme. Kind of cool. Huh? He's kind of cool. He's not. There's nothing cool about Doomsday. I, I guess I'm yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. I find well, him kind of cool. Uh, anyway, but, so John. I do kind of cool. Jonathan Majors is Kang the Conqueror. And I'm back. Yes. <laughs> Just like that, the MCU sucked me right back in. I'm back. Don't care what the movie's about. I assume Ant-Man in some way. Um, uh, yeah, because Ant-Man. Messing up, likely messing stuff up. Don't care. I'm in. I'm watching it. Um, I love Jonathan Majors. I don't have anything else. That's it. I don't even care what the movie's about. He's also going to be in the new Creed movie. And I saw the trailer for that. And I was like, I'm going to see that too. So, I mean, if you, and he's supposedly in, he's not supposedly, he is in a movie where he's a pilot during one of the U S wars. I, Adam was watching it the other day and I was watching a little bit. Is it his, the boy can act. Yeah, he can. He can act. What good. The boy, good. You know, the only what? reason why he signed up to do this particular role is because King the Conqueror is not one person. There's multiple versions right. of King the Conqueror, so he can do a different take on each and every one. Yeah, because I, I honestly was uh, a little surprised because Jonathan Majors doesn't seem like the huge franchise kind of person, but I once I saw his well, that one version of King the Conqueror that you see in Loki. Once I saw, because I think the version of him in Ant Man is a different. Kang oh, Conqueror. it's a completely different Kang the Conqueror. Yeah, this dude is. This dude. I think they said this Kang is Warlord Kang. Okay. Or he might be the Ultimate Kang. I don't know. This is this is definitely the the one the Kang that was in Loki was He Who Remains. Yes. Even though he won, and he was the one that that was the Lone Kang survivor until they killed him, he mm-hmm. is. Not the one. No. He ain't the one. This is one of the ones in Ant-Man. I can't wait to see that movie. I'm running to the movie theater. I'm going to get my yeah. ticket early. I'm not going Thursday night because COVID is back up. So I'm going to go Friday COVID. morning. Huh? Damn. Yeah, COVID is back up. I'm out of COVID. I, I was talking to somebody earlier, and this is completely yeah. off topic because we have really gone off topic on a lot of these topics. But that's okay. That's how we oh, roll. Yeah. That's Happy Hour Friday. That's how we do it. That's how it is. Uh, I told him, hey, 2020 was my best year. 2021 yeah. was was another good year for me. 2022 was the worst year of my life. 2022 sucked. Yeah, but 2020... It was the worst year of my life. No, that 2022 was the worst year of my life. But 2020 yeah. and 2021, oh, those were those some good years. Some good years. Well, I think the reason 2020 was good for me was just coming off the heels of 2019, which is ranked top five, one of the worst years of my life. Yeah, that was a tough year. It was a rough year. Yeah. And so coming off that, um, getting back to work and then being immediately sent home to work from home and getting a new dog. Yeah. Yeah. And like it was just a lot of stuff. I was just like, oh, okay, thanks are finally. <laughs> thanks, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, you waited till I was down and out, but you showed up. Well, you know why the <laughs> pandemic? said you fine. You know why the pandemic was good for minute. me, though, right? You don't. You didn't have to go 
into the gym anymore? Is that no? I still no. I was still it was it was very very minimal. But yeah, Yeah. still no. There was one person that I was seeing in person during 2020. Everybody else was virtual. But it was the fact that I didn't have to leave my home. Yeah, I didn't have to go anywhere, and it was a built-in excuse. Anytime somebody wanted to see me, like man, this is COVID out there. I ain't going outside. Or, oh man, I think I might have, I might have been exposed. I mean, I I'm not one there. of those people that yeah. when they're alone get lonely. No, I'm one of those people when I'm alone, I'm at my happiest. Having a built-in excuse to not go anywhere, right? I don't want to go nowhere. Not be bothered for an entire year, it felt real good. It felt real good. I wasn't really in a hurry for stuff to open back up. I have a lot of friends that are very outgoing and they were, it was killing them. Right. And I was like, I'm really doing great. I've mm-hmm. never felt better. Um, yeah, it, I really doing great. Getting COVID, not great. No, that COVID was, was the worst. Terrible. Yes. Yeah. I, um, I, but yeah. yeah, not having to go anywhere. Hmm. Um, I really spent a lot of money, Uber Eats, Instacart, you know, a lot of money was spent. Amazon. Well, we share an Amazon account. You, yeah. you was getting on me. You was like, Bruce, if you're going to order Amazon, email, come to me. You was like, if you're going to do Amazon, get everything that you want in one particular day on one, one order. Why are you doing order. three or four orders throughout an entire day? And I'm like, cause because I, sometimes I'll be forgetting. Because not only does it send me when you order it, I get an email. When it's shipped, when it's delivered, I get an email. So I think today alone, and these are pretty much all your purchases, I probably got like seven or eight emails. And I'm just like, I can't keep swiping delete on these. No, one hold order, on. one order, bundle it, one order. Well, I did make one order yesterday because I'm redoing. The little studio. This will be all mm-hmm. different next Friday. Be okay. all different. So I'm redoing the studio. So I got some more equipment. I'm still and trying to figure all this. Delivery day. Huh? Pick one delivery day. I did pick one delivery day and one came early. God. I wish I wish both of them had came today because I would have had a new studio today. Yeah. You know? I I need it. It's supposed to be delivered tomorrow. I need it to come early tomorrow so I can knock it all out because I have early interviews to do on Saturday. This is just my room and I just, well, this is just my room too, but I'm creating, yeah. a little, you know, you know, doing yeah. something, doing something different. Doing, Got doing something. Well, that's Got fine. I understand that, but I'm saying during the pandemic, you were driving me nuts with these emails. Yeah. And I was like, just pick a time at the end of the day, everything is saved in the cart. You've added whatever you need to add throughout the day. And then hold on. I can't do that because we share an account and you're notorious for putting stuff in the cart and just leaving it in the cart. So I'm like, oh, oh, she about to order. No, I had to take something out of the cart yesterday when I wanted to order. Because we were on there at the same time. No, no, no. I I chose different. I go to my cart and it's empty and I'm like, Pretty sure I just put some stuff in here. <laughs> I put it as safe for later. I don't ever delete it. Put it safe for later. That safe for later list is like two hundred and seventy-two items, There's though. So many items in it. Because I'm saving for later. Your wish list. Just put it in. The, I'm not gonna go over this with you. <laughs> this is. This is <laughs> I'm my, my, list, my, my list Amazon is private. I don't know how to get to it. Oh my God. I don't know how to get to it unless I, I add I something. Find, I will find out. I will fix it. And I will create you a wish list. Put stuff in the wish list. Cause I'm tired. I'm going to clear out that safe. No, me. I need it. Don't I'm do it. <laughs> no, I don't do it until I get till I get all that situated. Cause there's some stuff in there that I've been needing. I've been meaning to get since July of 2019. I'm going to get one day. I'm going to get it, <laughs> but I need it in there for safe for later to remind me that one day I'm going to need to get it. Ladies and gentlemen, Ant Man. Well, no, we'll Ant Man is going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Let's we'll see. Support but it's funny. Uh, black villains. Oh, well, Thanos was almost a black villain. Thanos was not black. It, it, the core of him was black. Because yeah. when we was watching Infinity Stone, Infinity War, we was like, he got a point. 
It's probably not the way we would go about doing it, but he got a point. No, that, that doesn't mean he's black just because I agree that he had, in theory, a point. When he was fighting, he was all cocky about it. He wasn't afraid of them. He was like, no, I'm I'm, I'm beat that. No. I'm beat that butt right Thanos, now. Thanos was definitely a white man. Nah, I don't believe it. Just because what's his name played him don't mean to be white. Right because he believed he was right. <laughs> Even though there was a gang of people being like, you are incorrect. He was like, no. Nah. Well, I don't know Definitely that he. Right. I don't know that he wasn't. That's right. some entitlement right there. Uh, uh, That's okay. Top tier entitlement, <sighs> and honestly, caucasity. So I'm calling it right now. Thanos is a white man. Okay. I refuse to believe just because he was purple skinned that he was somehow a man of color. He was not. All right. Well, speaking of honesty. I was speaking to a friend of mine earlier today and she was telling me how uh, one of her friends asked her to hang out on mm-hmm. Saturday night. She was like, yeah, cool. I haven't seen you while you're going to be in town. Let's get together. And somehow the schedules got kind of goofy. And the friend was like, well, I was supposed to be my friends, some other friends too, but that's cool. We can all hang out. And my friend was like, so I'm going to be around strangers who I've never met before. I don't really want to do that. Right. So, and yeah. that's how she was. And then she was like, and then I'll also, I'm supposed to be talking to one of my mentees earlier in the day. That's going to take a couple of hours. And I'm meeting another friend for lunch. And that's mm-hmm. going to be a while. That's a full day. I let said, me hey, tell look, you Yo, hold on. Mm-hmm. Let me, let me get to Go the ahead. point. So Go I ahead. said, Hey, look, I'm going to tell you like my sister tell me. <laughs> Honesty is the best policy. You could just say to your friend, look, I would love to see you, but I'm going to be, uncomfortable being around all these strangers that I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to catch you next time. Yeah. And it's there's that, nothing wrong with that. It's that simple. I am very honest. I'll, be, I'll just tell people I ain't going to make it to that. Listen, <laughs> you say about four o'clock, I, I ain't going to be able to make it. I can only do, I think a maximum of like two things in a day. Well, unless so, it's Sunday brunch. That's one thing. That's one thing. But you're going to different I places. I multiple locations. I'm saying oh, one thing. I okay, I got you. Two things. One event. So I can go to the grocery store in the morning <laughs> and to lunch like that afternoon. Don't ask me to come out for drinks because I'm not going to make it. Can you go to the grocery store in the morning and then come out for drinks in the evening? Yes, I can do two things. Two things. <laughs> I could do two things. I but that's prefer it. to do one. <laughs> if you talk about now three and the third thing is I'm in a situation, a social situation with strangers. <laughs> no. Some and people you know thrive what? in that. And you, yeah. This is when as an introvert, you just can't be friends with extroverts. Right. Cause they have no problem. Oh, swing by Justin's party. It's just like a bunch of his coworkers. I don't know them or anything, but I'm going to go. No. <laughs> I don't know why she had to sound like Becky with the good hair, that's but okay. How introvert, that's how extroverts sound in my head. Okay. They talk really fast. It's, it's they talk like, like Valley Girls. They talk like they talk like Clueless. That's like Justin's party. I don't know. Everybody's going to go. And I'm like, everybody's not going to go because guess who's not going? <laughs> But it, um, but that leads me to a bigger conversation about honesty because yes, honesty is important, but also honesty ain't for every situation and every time frame. There are some people out there that I've that I've known in my life, and I'm not talking about you. This is the first time I'm not taking a shot at you. All right. Uh, there are people out there that have said things, and they're just like. I'm just being honest. And I was like, well, one, I didn't ask you for your opinion. Like I didn't mm-hmm. ask you for your honesty. You're just giving me honesty. Right. And just because you said something honest doesn't mean that there was a time or the place to say it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's a distinct difference between a person's unsolicited perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. <Right>? Message. <laughs> unsolicited opinion about something. Right. And telling the truth it, even the I'm truth not, even the truth sometimes doesn't say for I'm instance not giving somebody unsolicited truth if you're asking me to come to something jonna will you come 
I'm going to give you my truthful answer. No, I'm not going to come to that thing because I don't want to. It sounds like a nightmare and I don't want to do it. And I'm very lucky that I have friends that are like, yeah, that sounds about right, but I knew you'd want to be invited anyway. The, the so weird, I'm inviting you, that, but I never... That's never the thing that bothers me. You want to be invited, but you ain't going to go. You want the person that do because the effort. I'm, because you never know, sometimes I will. And I love when I walk into the bar and everybody was for sure I wasn't coming because I did not respond in the group text. And then I do show up and they're like, damn, John is here. It's great. So one of my <laughs> friends listening to this, she's going to mm -hmm. laugh her ass off when she hears that you do that because I did the exact same thing. Her and her husband were having a party and they, they know me. So they're like, look, we're having a party. First of all, they should have known they're good enough friends of mine that if they invite me to something, I'm going to go. Right. Right. I, they should have known that, but maybe they didn't realize the affinity I had for them. Right. right. So, cause I can like, I ain't out here telling everybody, you know, I like you, right? Like I'm right. not out here telling people that. So maybe yeah. they just didn't know where they stood in my life. And they thought, well, right. we'll throw this invitation out there. Maybe he'll come, maybe he won't come. But of right. course, if they give me an invitation, I'm going to go. Right. But... <laughs> The way they prefaced it was, I know you don't like to commit to stuff, but we just, we just going to invite Thank you to you this party. Thank you for seeing me. And I said, Thank you for seeing me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't quite say it like that, but I was mm -hmm. like, I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you know. Yeah. Fair. And I never let them know. I knew right. I was coming, but I never let them know. See, <laughs> see, I don't do it on purpose. When I see in the group text, oh, let's go all, let's all go out for a drink. What's everybody doing? Let's go out for a drink. And I don't answer. It's because I'm not sure if I'm going to have like the social battery to do it. The social bandwidth. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'll have the capacity for that. Right. By the time the time comes. Because usually the group text is earlier in the day. Or maybe earlier in the week. Y'all are aiming for the weekend. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to feel. I can't, I I can't make a commitment like that. Until I'm getting in the car to come there. Right. Like, I don't know how I'm going to feel. So I probably, I'm not going to say maybe, because I feel like most people think maybe is yes. I am not going to say maybe. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to say, no, I'm not going to come and then turn around. I don't No, I'm just going to be like, boop. Mum's the word, not going to say nothing. <laughs> and then if the time comes and I text y'all still over there, that means I'm checking to see if y'all still over there. Right. Because I'm going to come. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, if y'all tell me, are we wrapping up? Then I'm like, cool, because I never got out of my pajamas anyway. <laughs> but, <laughs> but more about truth and honesty. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't agree. Say, for instance, you were performing. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, say, for instance, we we do this show live in front of an audience or something like that. Right. Right. And you go up to your friend and ask your friend, what did you think of the show or something like that? And your yeah. friend was like, the show was hot in their head. They're like, the show is horrible. I don't know why I wasted my time coming here. Mm -hmm. It's not what you want to hear. That's not what you want to tell them. Yes, and that, no, that's not what you depend. Well, it kind of depends if you go up there so happy of this accomplishment that you've made. Yeah. And then they hit you with, well, I didn't really like the show. That's not the time to tell the truth. You can tell the, you can tell them that you didn't really enjoy the show, but not in that moment of their joy. Right. There are things that you could say that isn't a lie. Yeah. But well, not I was that here. Truth. No, you can say, you can say, you something about that seat I was if, sitting in. if somebody asked you, it was like, if, if you asked somebody, Hey, you know, I'm really happy that I did this. I'm really happy that I made this accomplishment. What'd you think of the show? They can respond. I'm really happy for you that you made this accomplishment. This was a big deal for you to get yeah. up here and do that. Right. Yeah. And then maybe a couple of weeks later. So, Hey, you asked me what I thought of the show. As you come down off of that. Mm -hmm. I ain't really, you know, I, that wasn't really my thing. I'm happy for you, but it wasn't really my thing. Like there are ways that you could tell the truth that don't I have mean, to, just because, just because you tell the truth doesn't mean that you have to be a, a jerk about the way you tell the truth. I think it's still whether or not it's, it's unsolicited. Like again, mm -hmm. if, if in that moment I'm seeing my friend, they're excited about what they, 
I'll give you a prime example. Okay, here we Has go. Has anybody ever gone to a children's play or <laughs> music event or a children's art show? You, you Kids not, are not good, you, by and large. You are all. not. You are not. Please tell me you ain't telling a little baby that they play and it was horrible. Of course not. Okay, all right. This is what I'm trying to get at. Okay. This is a child who just played a five-minute rendition of Children Are Future, you know, <laughs> on the recorder. It was terrible. I okay? believe the Children Are Future teaching well and yes. let them lead the way. Okay. Yes. It was terrible because kids, by and large, are not good at art. Okay, but I'm not going to buy. You got some savants out there, but mostly your average kid. A seven year old is not that great on the violin. Okay, let's be. Uh, Okay, you're talking about instruments, not art in general, because art, like if you're talking paintings and drawings and things like that, that's subjective. No, you give me a drawing and you say it's a dog and I say it's a giraffe because of why is his neck so long? It's because you're not good at drawing dogs. No, it could be a hot dog. They got long necks. You mean a dachshund? I don't know what the actual technical name. (laughs) (laughs) That's what we do. Our show shouldn't be called Happy Hour. It should be called Getting Off Topic. (laughs) It should be called Getting Off Topic. (laughs) You have two people who cannot stay on topic. Maybe I'm going to change the name of it. I think I'm going to change the name of it. It ain't going to be Happy Hour no more. It's going to be Off Topic. Off Topic. (laughs) It's going to be called Off Topic. Because neither one of I mean, I think you're drinking, but I'm not drinking. I I have have a little taste. The people that's going to watch the video since since they can't watch it live right now, the people that's going to watch the video is going to see me having a little taste. Yeah. But I think in that moment, uh, you know, they run up to you. Uh, Auntie Chana, what'd you think? Baby, I'm so proud of you. Like, it's like my actual opinion about it is not really relevant in this situation. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's just not. It's There are, there are no, I'm not going to tell a kid. I don't think the recorder is where you should be investing a lot of your time, baby. Like, I'm not going to do that, right? I'm just going to say, I'm so proud of you. You did such a good job. But, and to but me, why would you treat... It's not a lie. Okay, okay. But why does it have to be specifically children? Like, you could do the same thing for adults. It doesn't have to be children. I just said for... In, that was just a for instance. But anything, like, I, I have friends that throw events sometimes or, you know, are that act or different things and maybe I don't maybe I don't watch every episode but that's not the point I am proud of you that is the truth I am happy for you that is the truth how much of the truth I reveal is based on the situation and I don't think also we should confuse the truth with somebody's opinion also right because I was actually just watching a video and a, a lot of times where you see this is with fat phobia, right? You get people in the comments talking about, oh, this person is so fat, you're so unhealthy. You don't give a damn about my health. You don't like me being a fat person and happy. That's what you don't like because you hate yourself and you're thin. Yeah, a lot <laughs> okay? of people, you when they lash that. out, it's because yeah. they have their own pain. <laughs> And they're like, well, it's the truth. It is linked to hypertension. Yeah, that is the truth. But let's be honest. I didn't ask you. And also, you don't care about that. <laughs> so I think, I, I think again, it's, it's got to be, you got to think about, like you said, the time and the place, whether the truth is really relevant in that situation, whether you actually care about telling truth. I actually care about telling people that I'm not going to come to something because I don't want to get somebody I care about hopes up that I'm going to arrive and I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, That's that's the reason why anytime somebody asks, Hey, uh, you want to go to this thing? Oh, I'm gonna let you know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Sometimes I don't let you know. That means I'm not coming. Or sometimes in the moment, I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. And then the time comes, it's like, you know what? I do want to do that. And I call you up or I'll text you and be like, you know what? Actually, if y'all are still up there, I'm going to come through. Literally, it's never happened to me. Where you decide, where you said no before, and then you decide later that you want to do it. If it's an initial no, it's a forever no. But you know. (laughs) (laughs) 
I never know how I'm going to feel. Nah, I never know how I'm going to feel. If it's an initial no for me, it's a forever no. Uh, but you also know that very rarely do I say no right away because I'm right. a people pleaser. Yes. So that is that's the reason why I've learned to just be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll let you know. And now everybody that knows me, everybody that's close to me, everybody, not even close to me, everybody that knows me, that knows me in a social setting, mm-hmm. when they invite me to stuff or when I say, hey, I'll let you know for like an outing for a social outing, nine times out of ten, I ain't coming. Yeah. And, and they say, I know what you mean by that. And I was like, what? I mean, I don't know. And legitimately, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. A lot of times if I say I don't know or I'm not responding, it's because I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, there are things I do say yes to, and that's big events. So like mm. I was saying, mm. you know, a couple weekends ago, it was, my, it was a good friend of mine. I've known him for many years. It was his 50th birthday in New Orleans. I... I RSVP'd yes without looking at the details. I thought it was just a, we were having a party here in Atlanta. I didn't know it was a three day event in New Orleans. Uh, did not pay attention. Yeah, that was 100% your fault. But also, that should be known ahead of time before the invitation is sent out. It was out. all on the invitation. It was it, it was there. No, no, no. I but it should be it should be work. known like if this is one of your people. Like, hey, I'm this is what I'm thinking about doing for my birthday party. The invitation should be the the second or third notice that this is what we're doing for the birthday party. Like that's this a whole was months trip. in advance. This was months in advance, and we got like he wasn't throwing it. His friend was throwing it, and it was like a save the date. We got first. That was it a surprise party? Things. No, he knew about it, I, but it I had all the information, feeling. but like it had all the information. It had the dates. It had where it was. It had the information. I did not read it. I just saw, oh, Fabian's 50. Yeah, I'll go to that. Click RSVP. Yes. It wasn't until another friend of mine was like, hey, you want to fly down there together and we can split a hotel? And I was like, hmm. <laughs> But I was going to go regardless, not just because I already RSVP. Yes, but because that's an important event. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to that. Mm-hmm. Friends know if it's a birthday party or you're celebrating something, I'm going to be there. Right. I'm going to come to that. So uh, it's just the little things every once in a while. I mean, I'm not always going to make it to that. Yeah. I dig it. Yes, we are. That's being and honest. And I'd rather let you know up front, be honest about it. And so... Y'all already know where I stand and where I'm at. And my friends are dope because they're like, no, we knew we knew you wasn't going. We knew you wasn't going nowhere. Well, look, I, most of the time I'm not going to be up front. Most of the time I'm going to tell you, I'm going to let you know. But if I am <laughs> up front, I'm going to say no. And that no ain't changing. <laughs> okay, sis, the final segment. And you know, we always got to end off with telling funny stories from our past. Yeah. I came up with two mm-hmm. and it was, uh, the time that you and Adam put the hole in the wall, which hole. Oh, okay. Okay. Both. I don't know. Uh, the hole in the wall where y'all covered it up with wallpaper. Yes. That's and, a good one. And then, um, the time you made me tell him myself, when I thought I broke your leg. Yeah. And you know what? I, I got to apologize for that. Cause I knew my leg wasn't broken <laughs> and it honestly stopped hurting well before I stopped crying. Oh, and, um, <sighs> but I didn't even teach you a lesson. Um, let me set the scene. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'm a small child. I'm a young girl. I'm a little girl. Okay. Mm, yes. You're like nine. That's a little. I, You're like I'm nine a, or ten. Okay. Anyway, you were fourteen. Because we were in the house at that time. Yeah, you were fourteen. And if you, you were put, ten, I was fourteen. Yes, you put. You like to practice your wrestling moves. <laughs> you were very into wrestling. Still, I'm st- somebody. Still somebody jumped on me the other day. They was like, "Wait a minute, you still watch wrestling?" I was like, "Huh?" Well, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you had the action figures, the ring. You were very dedicated to what was then the WWF, but you were. I think you also watched WCW. Yes, I did watch WCW. Yes, yes, yes. I watched um, all wrestling. 
and you like to your your wrestling name was Bruce Van Vader. Yeah, uh, copy off of uh, Big Van Vader, but yes. I couldn't be Big Van Vader. I was Bruce Van Van Bader. Bader. I don't know yeah. what Bader is, but oh, I was baiting y'all into wrestling with sure. me. Sure. Um, <laughs> typically, when uh, this was much later, but when we actually bought a camcorder, because back in the day people took videos with camcorders. Right. Uh, we bought it this I, time. You, we didn't. Would, we didn't get it from the video store. I don't know if it was purchased. We had one. No, I'm sure Dad bought it. Anyway, yeah, I, think bought I it. used to be the. I used to be the cameraman, and I would film your matches with Adam. That was later. Uh, that was that, that was, was later. later. That was later. Though. This particular <laughs> Which, occasion, but I was still entirely too old. <laughs> to still yeah. be. I think I was like 16 and 17. Yes, very much. You were very too old for it. And too big, honestly. Uh -huh. It was a very distinct height. No, I had to wrestle and... Adam on my knees. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. He's still so, pissed about that chair battle, but that's a different story. I don't know why you decided to practice the figure four leg lock. First of all, it wasn't practice. I knew how to do the fix forward leg lock. You didn't. No, I did. You almost killed me. I, no, I didn't. I knew how to apply pressure and how not to apply pressure because I'd have watched Ric Flair do it 17, 11 times. So I knew you how to do pressure. it. You applied pressure. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You nearly killed me. You nearly broke my leg. I don't know how breaking your leg nearly kills you. I don't know how those things. I, I would have bled out. After you, you severed my leg from my body. Anyway, it hurt, ladies and gentlemen. What did I do? What a normal little girl would do, and that no. is start crying. No, okay. I crying, started yes, crying. Yes, a normal little girl would start crying. You mm -hmm. didn't cry. You did more than cry. I you acted like I shot your puppy <laughs> with a bazooka in front of your face. My sign is Leo. I have a flair for the dramatic. Oh. I will not apologize for this. I needed you to know that this was the worst pain I had ever experienced mm -hmm. in my young life. Mm -hmm. I needed you to feel that. And I put on the performance of a lifetime. So, so much, much so. Ago. Yeah. Jinx. <laughs> Jinx. You told on yourself. It wasn't just that, Jay. You had me crying because you made me think I really broke your leg. I was and ready to write off wrestling. You took the love of my life. You took the love of my life. I was fed up. <laughs> it's not fed like up. it's truly, not like I had you pretty. wrestle with us a lot. You was it's normally the referee. You let me go. Yeah, it stopped hurting once you let me go. <laughs> and um, but it was too late. I was deep in character. I was a method actor. And I was deep in character. And I was, I, when I talk about this was top tier tantrum, flailing, call, I called on the Lord several times. You broke my leg. You broke my leg. That's no, all I can You broke my leg. You broke yeah. my leg. Ah, ah. Yeah. That's yeah. what you was doing. Yeah. And you deserved it because what, what the hell? I told you what I was doing. I don't remember agreeing to it. It's not. I can't force the figure four leg lock on you. You know how strong your legs was. <laughs> I can, you can't, you was in karate at that time. You you would have been Truly, flailing I and was, kicking. Like no. I was definitely wondering why you actually believed that you had broken my leg. I, because <laughs> the, you were so convincing, and I should have known how ridiculous that you are when it comes to pain. When you got that nail stuck in your hand at one time, that's a different story for a different time. But yeah. So you were screaming and crying and hollering. Mm -hmm. I started crying because I thought I broke your leg. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Do I call the ambulance? Do, do we have to rush you to the hospital? I'm 13. I'm not 14 yet. I'm 13, so you're nine. Okay. So okay. it's like, I don't know what to do. So instead of calling mom. Which <laughs> to this day, I this don't, is probably one of the dumbest decisions just, of your life. Just, just stupid. <laughs> just, I don't know what's wrong with me. Why would I think calling dad was a good idea? Maybe because right. dad was the only person we could get a hold of. Mommy is a nurse. I would have just kept trying. But mom was a nurse, but mom would never help us out with any 
health related situations. He would have told you my leg wasn't broken. Probably. Yeah. So I called dad. And the reason why I know it's 13, because dad, that was the cutoff of dad whooping. Like dad stopped yeah. whooping at that age. And it was like, I'm just going right. to take things away from him. He too big to be getting whooping. Yeah. But I, I think this was the last instance. Yes. He was like, I don't know what he said to me or what you said, or maybe you said, dad, my leg is really not broke. Cause he didn't, he would rent, he remained calm. And he mm-hmm. said, Bruce, when I get home, I'm gonna beat your ass. <laughs> and, I, and I was just like, I deserve it. Cause I broke my sister's leg. <laughs> I didn't deserve it. You did. I don't think he did though. No. Cause I think I did go to him and say he didn't break. Me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think, I was, yeah, no, I, I think I got, in tr- I got in I trouble. Wasn't, I wasn't gonna just let you get beat and I knew I was fine. Oh, <laughs> you and Adam have done that before though. Y'all have let it me get beat one before. One time I was five years old. You cannot, I was in kindergarten. I was five, nope. five years old. Nope. And it was a stupid question to ask a five year old. Adam was three. Anna say this. I was five and Adam was three. And Adam was three in the say this. It happened one time. Oh, that's, Let's a, move on. that's another story that we can tell for another. It's more than that. I got to mark these because there's more stories for us to tell at a later date. Uh, and then here's my worry. These to us are like ah, stories from our childhood. I'm concerned. <laughs> Other people will hear them and be like, that sounds traumatic. Okay. And I don't want to give people the wrong impression. It was. <laughs> <laughs> what my man say in uh training day smiles and cries that's all this is is smiles and cries i don't remember the context of that but i do remember that yes yeah, just smiles and cries that's all life yeah. is, is smiles and cries yeah things yeah. are traumatic everybody go through something traumatic yeah right like everybody goes through something traumatic and as we tell these stories Certain people might go out there and be like, oh, I would be devastated. I would still be holding on to that for the rest of my life. And there are some stuff that happened to us when we were younger that as adults, full grown adults, we still hold on to. Uh, yeah, I'm in therapy for that right now. Y- y'all will I never get those stories. I was a psychiatrist and a counselor. Whew. So yeah, you do the math. Right. But <laughs> to me, and, and and before we tell these stories... I talk to my sister about them and there are times mm-hmm. when she's like, I don't want to tell that story. And I'm like, okay, yeah. we won't tell that story because I look at it differently than she does. But that doesn't mean that her trauma shouldn't be respected from that particular situation. It's the same thing that I was talking about in the last episode. I don't know if you peeped it. The last episode about Jewish people and the Holocaust and trauma mm-hmm. and respecting people. Yeah. Yeah. Just because something happened to you and you thought it wasn't a big deal and that same thing happened to another person and it was a big deal doesn't mean you need to brush it off and say, well, it wasn't a big deal to me. I don't know what you should just get over it. No, everybody is different. So respecting people. And so when my sister says, I don't want to talk about that story, we don't talk about that story. I think a good rule of thumb to not be just a trash human being. Yeah, that's pretty much it. When someone says, I don't like that or that upset me, listen, believe them. Yeah, listen, believe them. It doesn't matter what you think, it doesn't matter what your intent was. Um, you said something, you did something, or they're talking about something that even if you haven't experienced it, you are one person. Mm -hmm. They are also one person and they did experience it. And whether or not you can empathize, you can at least sympathize and say, I hear you. That's valid. And I'm sorry you went through that. That is just not being a trash human being. It's the bare minimum. That's all it, it, just believe minimum. people. Yeah. But speaking Except of trash, let's end the episode. I don't believe George Santos. No. But I I feel sorry for him because it's obviously something wrong there. Yes. To be this I'm like, he lies it's more than Trump. Trump. He lies more than Trump. Yeah. So And about 
really he could have given them an immigrant story you came from a rough background you've made mistakes you this that like you could have mm -hmm. given them your real story i mean a lot of his real story is that he's an ass <laughs> um and he owes a lot of people money but you could have given them some semblance of that right but instead you chose to lie about easily confirmable things and to me it's giving pathological yeah but i also feel bad for him but who i don't feel bad for is you and adam when y'all put that hole in the wall and from what i wasn't there you were not there no the story that i've heard is that mm -hmm. we had those giant storage buckets that that little kids could fit in and yes. y'all would pack them up with pillows and stuff and push each other down right. the stairs the only problem it was, was called, it was called stairs luge <laughs> What? I don't think we're the only kids to have done stairs luge. Yo, but their stairs may not had a curve at the bottom. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't a physics major. Oh, no. Like, I, okay, sorry. I did, I don't know what I thought was going to happen. Um, it wasn't that. Sen essentially what happened was, yes, it was this large Rubbermaid storage tote with a lid, I would fill it with pillows. I would place Adam inside of it with a helmet. He had a helmet on. I also where'd y'all get this helmet on. from? It was like my helmet from like my our bikes. Oh, like okay. Our bike helmet. Uh -huh. um, I put the lid on also because what if it flips? I don't want him flying out of it. He was totally enclosed. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would push it down. The he stairs. was in a sledding tomb. Yeah, that stairs luge. <laughs> That's it. No. I ended up perfecting it later, and I actually got mom to do stairs luge one time. What? Yeah, I perfected it. Um, it ended up changing to pillows at the bottom of the stairs, mm. and you slide down the stairs on a cardboard box. And she saw me doing it, and I said, it's stairs luge. <laughs> and she actually <laughs> sat down on the box and wrote it down Which the house? Stairs. Where was this? This was in, this was in uh, West Haven. Oh, okay. All right. No, no, no. Sorry. This was in Autumn Crest. I, I, had, back... I, knew, it, I knew it had to be Autumn Crest because that it had the big back, back stairs. Okay. I was like, mm -hmm. what? But yeah. time out. So you perfected it when you was like, <laughs> you were still playing it when you was an upperclassman in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, did we not just go over the fact that you... Hey, look, that's you, neither here nor there. <laughs> I liked jackass stunts. There were things, I did things that I saw on the MTV show Jackass, and I liked jackass You ain't jump on no tree like I did, though. I jumped out of a moving car. Adam was driving. Oh, God. Adam was driving. <laughs> it was in the neighborhood. We were coming home. And I was like, I got to know how it feels to jump out of the car. <laughs> and I opened the passenger side door. And what? I jumped out of the car. <laughs> and Adam just stopped the car. <laughs> I don't even think I prefaced it with anything. I'm you just opened the door and just jumped out? And I jumped out of the car. What the hell is wrong with and you? I, and I tucked and rolled because I was like, I need to know if, if something go down and I need to jump out of a car, will I be afraid to do it? Will I hesitate? Now I know I won't. Yo, yo. I won't hesitate. Yo, I need, I need some chapstick because now my lips is dry from laughing so hard. What the hell are you talking about? You need to know. And you ain't even preface it. So I so Adam is driving, and he ain't a good driver yeah. to begin with. So Adam is driving, right? And you yeah. just decided to open up the door and jump out the car. Yes. Oh, Lord Jesus. And I tucked and rolled into the grass. Um, I did a thing. But you crying because I put you in the figure four leg lock. I was much older at this point. And at this point, I was very much into jackass stunts. I did uh, the, cow the living room pole vault. So that was <laughs> Hold on, Jay, you telling all this other stuff, but I want to know what happened when y'all put the hole in the wall. That's the whole oh, point. Yeah. We no, got we got to wrap up this episode, Adam, but I want to hear the story. Secure. Adam was secure. Right. I pushed him down the stairs. Didn't count on 
the fact that the stairs turn at the bottom. I mean, because it, it was like it, it just surprise you just jumped up at you and caught you off guard. I, again, I wasn't a physics major. I wasn't friggin' Doogie Howser or something like that. I was a normal child. Right. Who had a stupid idea <laughs> that she perfected. Didn't perfect. Into an amazing idea. Didn't perfect it. And children, do try this at home. Don't try uh, this at home. So, children ain't listening to this either way. Obviously, the bin did not turn. No, it didn't. It kept going straight into the wall. Um, at this time, we had this very ugly striped pastel wallpaper. It was there when we moved in. We never changed it. And there were extra rolls of that wallpaper in the attic. So we went up into the attic. How did y'all know there was extra rolls in the attic? Because we'd been in the attic and we saw there was there was a bunch of crap in the attic. There was a bunch of crap in the attic. I didn't like going up there. I knew there was spiders up there. But y'all was braver than I was. Yeah, the spiders didn't bother me. So uh, <laughs> we ended up, we had, I think, I want to say it's Adam's idea. Um, yeah. But I mean, to cover up a crime, it. that's Adam. To cover up a crime, yeah. So he said, let's just get the wallpaper and cover over the hole with the wallpaper. And I expertly cut out a square exactly the size of the hole. I matched up the stripe because the stripe pastel wall. I matched up the stripe. We taped it over and truly no one knew for years until mom and dad finally decided to change the wallpaper. No. And as they were taking the wallpaper, we did, we changed it to like, it was like this green and I, maroon stripe. This was as we were leaving the house and they were like making renovations. Okay. All right. Cause I don't remember. So mom, no, I wasn't yeah. there at the time. I was already up you here. Right there. All right, okay. You were already living in Maryland and mom took the wallpaper down and there it is. Looking so dad right wasn't the there. Dad wasn't there, but he was I up mean, here with me. They walked past them steps. Y'all walked up and down them steps for years. So never knew. So the, the the wallpaper didn't sink into the hole a little bit. Wow. No, because there's the here's the tip. You you cut it out larger than the hole. Okay. So it just and you tape it out on all sides. It's there. It's that no one noticed. <laughs> No one knew. And honestly, if mom never changed that wallpaper, nobody would have known. <laughs> nobody knew. Nobody knew. So did y'all get in trouble for that? No. Because let me tell you something. It was smart. <laughs> and nobody. <laughs> and they, I think they laughed at it so hard. They never noticed. Because mom's like, when'd y'all do this? Yesterday and stuff? No. It's been there for years. <laughs> Grandma lived with us. She didn't notice yeah. it. Nobody knew. And nobody been knew. Been there for years. Wow. Living room pole vault because I feel like I'm going to get comments about people wondering what living room pole. Let's vault save it is. for the next episode because we got to end this episode. We almost yeah. had an hour and that a half. Means all of y'all tune in next week. Next to week find out we're going to make a note to make sure that we include that, that living room and pole vault. We're going to forget. <laughs> but on that we're note. This is the end of the episode. Jay, I'm going to ask you like I do every week, what you want to say to the people before you leave. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I'll holla. Thank you for listening to Unsolicited Perspectives with Bruce Anthony. Please subscribe, like, comment, share, and donate. Donations help us keep giving you this free content each and every week. Until next time, howdy 5,000. Peace.